بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين في ليز رسائي السلوات We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us opportunity and blessing of witnessing another month of Muharram and true mu'mineen always look forward witnessing month of Muharram so that they can renew their relation and dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and in particular Abu Abdullah alayhi salam and Imam Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif If you have very great hajat, if you have difficulties in your life, if you see there are obstacles that you alone cannot overcome, ask Allah to give you life to witness months of Muharram and be able to go to the majalis of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam where the solution, the prescription, the medicine all come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is distributed with the least of conditions and requirements so generously through all over the world. So we are grateful to Allah that we have this blessing of attending these majalis. And right at the beginning of the month of Muharram, we want to pray to Allah to accept from all mourners of Abu Abdullah their mourning, to help all the organizers of majalis all over the world to be able to do justice with this great task and to be able to serve Mu'mineen and also we pray for the safety and security of all the mourners and all the pilgrims all over the world. May this Muharram be a Muharram which would be especially blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would be an opportunity for us as individuals, as community to inshallah make a steady progress towards our aims and objectives. We say in different du'as, like in Ziyarat Ashura, Allahumma ja'al mahya ya mahya Muhammad wa al Muhammad wa mamati mamata Muhammad wa al Muhammad. This short sentence includes almost everything because whatever you want to achieve, you achieve through your life. And if your life is like the life of the people who were successful, then you would become successful. Muhammad and Ali Muhammad are those 
that have been successful in their life. They are those that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the path that they have been traveling on. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليه. So, as the Quran itself explains, this path, which in the first place belongs to those that Allah has bestowed His blessings upon them, is the path of Nabiyin, Shuhada, Siddiqin, Salihin, and for sure, Muhammad and Ali Muhammad are in the first rank of these people who Allah has bestowed his blessings upon them. So we ask Allah to give us access to the same path. This is their path, but we want to also join them in their journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah accepts this dua from us that makes our life like their life, then we can get everything that we want. Plus, we say, وَمَمَاتِ مَمَاتَ مُحَمَّدٍ well, Not only I want to have my life like their life, I want to have my death also like their death. Because your death is the key part of your life. You can live 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, and it's very important. Every moment of your life is very important. But if you want to judge how successful someone has been in his or her life, either you have to review all his or her life, or just focus on his or her death. Kama ta'ishun tamutun. In the same way that you live, you die. So if you can understand how someone is dying, what is his or her condition at the time of death, you can understand everything about that person's achievements or failure in the life. And then the hadith says, وَكَمَا تَمُوتُونَ تُبَعْثُونَ So in the same way that you live, you die, and the same way that you die, you will be resurrected. So, if all our life, especially the last part of our life, is like Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, then we have everything. So whenever you read this dua, please read wholeheartedly. And know that this is where if you can get Allah's acceptance, you have got everything. Allahumma ja'al mahya ya mahya Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad wa mamati mamata Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Now the question is, what does it mean to have a life like their life, a death like their death? The first interpretation that comes to mind is that I want my life resemble their life. My death resemble their death. So if they have dedicated their lives to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do good deeds and to have good characteristics, I want also to dedicate my life to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do righteous deeds and have virtuous qualities. So I have to read their lives, I have to reflect on their lives, get lessons, apply to my life, and little by little change my life so that my life becomes like their life. And this is very important and this is what we all try to do all the time. Any Muharram, any months of Ramadan, Arba'een, other occasions have to remind us of this task to resemble their lives with my life and their death with the way I am going to end my life. We always have to remind ourselves of this task. 
And you should also check how much progress you have made. So one of the things I request all of you to do is from tonight, start thinking how much progress you have made since last Muharram. If we have not made any progress, then we are losers. Amir al-Mu'mir said, Man tasawa yawma fahuwa maghboon. Even if you days are the same, you are losing. If in one year from Muharram to Muharram, you don't see, you don't feel progress, or more accurately, if other people don't see progress in you, because unfortunately sometimes we see lots of progress that we have not made, but we see them. It's an illusion. So if other people see new progress, then that's good. Otherwise, you have to really mourn, but this time for yourself. Because you have lost your life. So, this is very important. We make sure that we remind ourselves of the task of resembling Muhammad and Ali Muhammad in our life. And then we check and examine ourselves. We evaluate ourselves. This is something that we have to do all the time. And I don't want to talk about this right now because this is something that I think is clear. And inshallah, in coming nights also we will explain more. But I think there is a second interpretation. Allahumma ja'al mahya ya mahya Muhammad wa al Muhammad wa mamati mamata Muhammad wa al Muhammad has a second interpretation. Or you can say a second layer, a deeper layer. Not only our life should resemble the life, but also our life should be added to the life. Please listen carefully so that, inshallah, this point becomes clear. If you have a father or teacher or leader that you very much love and your father or teacher or leader has started projects in his life that has not managed to complete. Now, how are you going to make your life like his life? You may say, I just try to resemble him. This is not enough. Or you may start similar projects, like the projects that he started, and then die without completing them. You have started your own projects. But I think the wisest way is to make your life an extension to his life. Are you with me? Not only just resemble them, Make your life an extension to their lives. And do what if they were alive today would have done. And complete the work that they have started. The projects that they started but didn't manage to complete. We followers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, cannot expect to do in our little and insignificant capacity what Ahlul Bayt السلام, were doing in their lives. But if we all together as community of Ahlul Bayt unite ourselves and work together and have this understanding that we want to make our lives an extension to their lives, then we can make sure 
that we complete what they have started. Then we can make sure that we would do what if Rasulullah was alive? What if Amirul Mu'mineen was alive? What if Imam Hussein was alive? So in this way, you are not letting them die in a spirit. If they are not physically with us today, but we have the ability to revive them in ourselves and then in society. So first you ask Allah to make your life like their life, but then you ask Allah to give in your life, life to them. And this is the revival of their affairs. So we have a great opportunity. We can turn and transform our individual, personal, insignificant life into the life of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. And that is by letting our hearts and souls merge Partitions go away. Hatred, misunderstanding, lack of trust disappear. And then all together give life to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad in today's world. And if we don't do that, we are depriving ourselves and humanity of a great blessing. One of the great achievements that we can have in these majalis, when we get together and we try to forget our selfish interest, our comfort, and sacrifice everything so that we can really commemorate Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. That's a great opportunity to unite ourselves and all together give an extension to the life of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. And if we manage to do this, adequately then we would certainly be blessed by the presence of Imam Mahdi Sharif. as you know Imam Mahdi Sharif in his tawqih he said لو أن أشياعنا وفقهم الله لطاعته على اجتماع من الأمر. If our Shia, our followers, if we, you people, if they were united in their affairs, والوفاء بما عليهم من العهد. And they were loyal to their covenant. The blessing of meeting us would not have been delayed. You know, when you say delay, there is a beautiful point here. Sometimes you think still the time of coming of Imam Mahdi has not come. Yeah, this is a maybe mentality and understanding of almost everyone. Still the time has not come. But the way that Imam is saying is that coming has been delayed. There is no reason that it should have taken this long. 
Ta'akhara. This is delayed. Means it could have happened much earlier. In another place, he says, Ma yahbisuna anhum. It doesn't stop us being with them except what reaches us of those news about what they do that we don't like. So, if we were united, if our lives were merged and given extension to the life of Muhammad and Allah Muhammad, then the coming of Imam Zaman was not delayed. In this Muharram, we, just we, not angels, not people in other planets, not even all humanity, if just we, the Shia, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, if we just we were united and get united, then we can welcome Imam Mahdi Ajjalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif first among ourselves, but then introduce him to all humanity. So you see, every year we get golden opportunities to change ourselves and our community and humanity, but unfortunately, we are not ready for that. Opportunities come and go, and we take only maybe 1% or 1 in 1,000 of what we can get. So let us try, let us do our best to make this Muharram special. Let us try to take what we hear seriously. And do in practice, little by little, everything that we learn. Then I can assure you, before Arba'in comes, you see change in your life. And if we do it together, we would see change in our community. And if our community worldwide do this, we would see change in humanity. But we have to start somewhere. So let us start. اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وآل محمد One aspect Inshallah we will talk about different aspects of the life of Ahlul Bayt in coming nights One aspect which is always manifest and outstanding and actually gives you ability to understand other things that they do is their deep and constant connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you don't see them forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or failing to remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They remember Him and remind us of Him. They are not just zakir, they are not just remembering Allah, they are also muzakir. They remind us of Allah. Is there anyone, I ask you know, question, you know, please answer honestly. We don't want just to say something because we are, you know, biased. Is there anyone who can study the life of Prophet or Ahlul Bayt salam and not see Allah present everywhere in the life? Is it possible? Anyone, Muslim, non-Muslim, if they study their lives, they see Allah is everywhere. They start their day with remembrance of Allah and they end their day with remembrance of Allah and they keep awake during the night invocating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
in the times of ease and difficulties, in the times of joy and grief, they always keep remembering Allah and reminding us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the best examples of Nothing make them forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neither I know you are already no squeeze but if you can still give more space inshallah to other people may allah inshallah help you and may allah bless you inshallah so nothing make them forget allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There are people that even they may start with remembrance of Allah, they may start with good life, a spiritual life, but unfortunately, little by little, they get distracted. It's not just enough to be in good condition. It's very important to keep the good condition. There have been many people that they are in good condition, but when attention of people goes to them, when people start pointing at them with fingers and praising them, then they start believing in themselves and forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And little by little, they ask people to praise them and serve them and God forbids worship them instead of praising and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They keep people busy with themselves. But you see, Muhammad and Ali Muhammad do not let anyone, even those who love them and are ready to die for them, to be diverted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They keep pointing at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to the people who disagreed with them or denied their position, they were very lenient. But when it comes to the people who were exaggerating about them and they were doing ghulub, they were very harsh. Unfortunately, opposite to what some of us do today. When we see someone is exaggerating and God forbids claim some kind of deity for them, either we are happy or we just, you know, close our eyes and close our ears. But if someone is not believing in them, we get angry sometimes, or some of us. But should be opposite. If Ahlul Bayt ever cursed anyone, was someone who was claiming that they were God or had some kind of lordship. Because it's against their life, against their principles, against their close relation with Allah to see someone is confused and can make mistake and think they are representing some kind of deity or lordship. Never ever. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Exhibited, demonstrated in his life, greatness of Allah and his own servitude. Not just greatness of Allah, also his maximum humbleness. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Amirul Mu'minin in his life, 
not only demonstrated greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also demonstrated his total and entire reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anyone, for example, reflects on dua kumail or munajat amir al in masjid of Kufa, would see two things, greatness of Allah and his poverty. This is the style of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. They don't let anyone to get confused. They keep referring people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and if we manage to follow them, then you would get two qualities. Love for Allah and humbleness. And therefore you love everyone. I want to mention one hadith and <coughs> inshallah tomorrow we can continue this discussion about the lifestyle of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Inna al-quluba thalatha Truly hearts are three. There are three types of hearts. Qalbun mashghulun bid-dunya. Some hearts are very busy with dunya. They are obsessed with dunya. And when you are with them, and maybe we are one of them, <laughs> but it's easier to notice in other people than yourself. So you see, their concern, their conversations, their planning, their joy or grief, all is because of dunya. If they get money, they are happy. If they lose money, they are sad. If they get, I don't know, well-paid job, they are very happy. If they lose it, they are very sad. Everything is dunya. Their heart is preoccupied with dunya. Okay, what is the achievement of these people? Rasulullah said, فَلَهُ الشِّدَّةُ وَالْعَنَى For such people, there is always feeling of sorrow, difficulties, stress, and suffering. Because you can never get satisfaction from dunya. Dunya is like salty water for a thirsty person. The more you drink, the more thirsty you become. If you don't drink, you are thirsty. If you drink, you are thirsty. <laughs> what can you do? But the problem is when you drink more, you are more thirsty. So at least if you keep the first thirst and don't go after it, it becomes actually more manageable. It's impossible to have life dedicated to dunya and then have no stress. We think if I get more money, stress will finish. Now I have a stress because still my money is not enough. If I can upgrade myself from millionaires to billionaires, stress will finish. If I have instead of one house, two houses, or three houses, a stress will finish. No. I can assure you that your stresses would increase. Not only in quantity, but also in quality. You would have different types of stress when you go to this journey, towards dunya. So Rasulullah said, that such hearts, they would always have difficulties and stress and pain. وَقَلْبٌ مَشْغُولٌ بِالْعُقْبَى But there are hearts that are busy with the hereafter. Not dunya only. With the hereafter. So, for them, Everything worldly is 
temporary and transient. And therefore, it doesn't make them worry too much or concern too much. <clears throat> if you are going to stay in a place which is very small and, you know, not very comfortable, but you know that this is just temporary and you have greater aims and just you want to use this so that you reach other things, it's very manageable. But if you think everything is just this place, then you feel all your life has been destroyed because you don't have a you know, bigger place. You don't have more money. So those who are concerned about the hereafter, then they would have higher ranks. If you are concerned with dunya, you would have a stress. But if you are concerned with the hereafter, you would get it. Dunya would never satisfy you. But if you are for the hereafter, you will be satisfied. You would have less worries and stress and pain in dunya. And you will make lots of things for your akhirah. You would save for your akhirah. But are we supposed to be only one of these two? Either mashgulun bil dunya or mashgulun bil uqba. Either only to be concerned with dunya or to be concerned with the akhirah. Rasulullah says no. There are three. The third type. Wa qalbun. Mashrulun bil mawla. And there is yet another type of heart which is not very much concerned about even akhirah. Certainly not dunya, even not akhirah as such. They are concerned with their master, with their beloved. They don't have any time to think even about their akhirah. They say, let us focus on our duties and our service and let Mawla decide for us what type of place and rank we should have in akhirah. Is it respectful to a Mola who has been kind and generous and supportive all the time, is it good that you think about what you should do for your Akhirah? Instead of thinking what you should do to please your master? A true woman would not even think about Akhirah in this sense. That make him his service to Mola secondary. Or say, how can I serve my mola in the way that I can get more reward for my akhirah? Please forget reward. Just focus on mola. Go to a higher level. Muhammad and Ali Muhammad were not busy with saving some rewards for their akhirah. They were constantly thinking what should I do for my master? What my servitude, my ubudiyah requires me from me in this moment? Let Mawla take care of everything. This is very important. And then you know what happens? If you work for dunya, فَلَهُ الشِّدَّةُ وَالْعَنَا Difficulty and stress. If you work for Akhirah, okay, Fallahul Uqba, you would have Akhirah. But if you work for Mawla, what happens? Rasulullah says, Wa qalbun mashgulun bil Mawla, Fallahu dunya wal Uqba wal Mawla. Then you would have everything. You would have. The best of dunya. What is the best of dunya? The best of dunya is honor, respect, love of people, good family, good students, good followers, kind people. 
You would have the best of dunya. The cream of dunya you would have. Of course, you may even have the money of dunya, but that's not important. You don't bother at all about money, but even you may have the money. But the cream of dunya you would have. The pleasure of dunya you would have. You would have also akhirah, but more than anything else, you would have mawla. If you have mawla, then you have everything. So, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to follow this beautiful path that Muhammad and Allah, Muhammad and all the prophets and messengers have showed us in their examples. I just end with a poem about Muharram and inshallah we listen to our brothers who would inshallah remind us of the tragedy of Karbala. Because this is the first night of our majalis, so we start with sending salam to Muharram. Salam man be Muharram, Muharram gul zahra. I offer my greetings to Muharram. Muharram, which belongs to Hussein, the flower of Zahra. Belat me malak. Bema tam gul Zahra. I offer my greetings to the lamenting of the angels when they cry and mourn for Hussein. I offer my greetings to the mourning of Imam Mahdi, the son of Zahra. Salam man be Muharram. Beteshnegi ajibash. I offer my greetings to Muharram and its extraordinary thirst for Hussein and his companions and his family and children. Salam man be Muharram be gusse wo kam Mahdi. I wish our eyes were able to see Imam Mahdi's condition in Muharram. How he mourns for Abu Abdullah. How he has no rest in Muharram. He is mourning for Hussein, but also feeling that he should go everywhere to give respect to the mourners of Hussein all over the world. Because he is the one who is Sahib al be chashm kase khun wa be shal matam mahdi his eyes are full of blood in ziyarat naye muqaddas imam said la abkiyan laik badal ad-dumu' ad-dama no tear is left in his eyes. Salam man be Muharram be Karbala wa Jalalash be lahzahay pur az huzn gharg dard o malalash I say my salam to Karbala. I say my salam to all those moments 
full of sadness and grief and pain on the day of Ajura. Salam man be Muharram be hal khasday Zainab. Be bin ayat dag dil shikasday Zainab. I offer my salam to the lady Zainab, to her heart which was full of pain, which was broken. Salam man be muharram be dasdo majge abal faz. بنا امیدی سقا به سوز اشگ عبال فرز I offer my greetings to the hand of عبال فرز to that jar of water that عبال فرز was carrying to that moment when he lost his hope for taking water to the children of Abu Abdullah. Salam man be Muharram be Qadu Qamat Akbar be Kam Khujg Azan Gui Zir Nizwa Anjar. I offer my greetings to Ali Akbar, to his beautiful body, especially to his dry throat under spears and swords. Salam, man, be Muharram, be Gahwari Asghar. به عشق خدلت شاه و گلوی پاره از غر I offer my salam to the cradle of Ali از غر to Hussain when he was embarrassed because he had no water to give Ali از غر and to the lack of Ali Azhar when he was injured. Salam man be Muharram be Zitraab Zukayna be An Malik ke Ruyaj Nadi de Jashm Madina. I offer my salam to the lady Zugayna, that princess who turned her face towards Medina, talking to Rasulullah, but never managed. Salam man be Muharram be Ashiqi Zuhayrash. به بازگشتن هر رو اروج ختم به خیرش I offer my salam to Zuhair who was a real lover of Hussein and to Hor who managed to return to Allah and ascend سلام من به محرم به مسلم و به حبیبش به روس پیدی اونو به بوی ات اتر عجیبش I offer my greetings to مسلم and حبیب ابن مظاهر and to اون and the fragrance coming from his body سلام من به محرم به زنگ محمل زینب به پار پار تن بی سر مقابل زینب
I offer my salam to Lady Zainab when she was traveling and the bodies of the martyrs were separated from the heads and the head of Hussein was moved in front of Zainab. Allah la'natullahi ala al-qawm al-zhalimin wa sayya'lamu al-lazina zhalamu ayyamun ghalabin yan ghalabun.